how to have affairs. Affair is simply a relationship. There are many arguments and debates about this theme of affairs. I've cast my net so wide tonight, as you're going to realize in just a moment, I'm going to restrain myself to the operational usage of this term only to imply extramarital affairs. Any sexual affair outside wedlock. You know, some people like avoiding it, or rather like avoiding going physical. So they keep it platonic. Either way tonight, I'm still calling it an extramarital affair because you have checked out of your marriage. Put it in a simple language. Anything that you wouldn't do in the presence of your spouse for the cause of our discourse today, I'm calling it an extramarital affair. I know there are some people who believe they can play life safe, but eventually the majority get caught. In previous forums, I've asked people why do people engage in extramarital affairs. I've had a lot of interesting things. For example, some people told me it's about better packaging. It's about better service delivery. It's about a taste of different models. It's a chase of the drill and such kind of drivel. A 2007 online survey by MSNBC revealed that 44% of men and that 6% of women in the United States had had extramarital affairs. What I may not quote authoritative statistic on this part of the world in terms of the number, absolute numbers, or at least the percentage of people involved in extramarital affairs, researchers generally agree that the numbers are on the rise. The empowered woman today is much more likely to engage in extramarital affairs than she could have done 50 years ago when she was castigated by the society's moralists. Young to middle-aged people are more likely to engage in extramarital affairs than the older married people. 50% of all marriages in the so-called free world today risk divorce. 70% of all those divorce cases are courtesy of extramarital affairs. 50% of all patients admitted in the hospital for fractured penises was courtesy of extramarital affair. Researchers believe that those patients may have been more excited during the affair that they had sex in an awkward place. Coital death is more rampant with people engaged in extramarital sex than when a man is sleeping with his wife back at home. And researchers believe the heart stresses during an extramarital affair more so if the man was in a panic mood in fear of being caught or where libido boosters were being used. Extramarital affairs are more prevalent where one couple is depending on the other for financial income. One of them is not working. Gays and lesbians want to suggest and want us to believe that sex is just physical. If sex were just physical, then why do affairs hurt? I submit to you tonight, affairs hard because sex is also emotional and spiritual. When a man and a woman make love, they release oxytocin, the hormones responsible for boarding. And that's why the scripture emphasizes that sexual intimacy should strictly be for a man and his wife where emotional protection can be guaranteed. Straight these days, that some married couples consent on anal sex. Any use that is not in line with the master plan, any use that is not natural is perversion. You see, the devil copies, corrupts, and counterfeits that which God has already created. 
God created sex. This is not a Hollywood idea. The devil corrupted and perverted the gift of God, the gift of sex. You see, counterfeits look like the original. That's why we do not have our 900 counterfeit bill, but we have a thousand bob counterfeit bill mimicking the original. In fact, these days, some couples also consent on the so-called open marriage. The Bible calls it by its right name, adultery. Cowards don't want to move against the grain. They want to look to be tread in fashion. They don't want to look like they are running out of style. In reality, styles run out of style. Catchers rise and fall. If you want to remain relevant, then you ought to be eternal. The only eternal thing is the word of God. The word of God changes not. And what does it say? Male and female created he them. Meaning, gender is God's idea. Therefore shall a man leave his mother and father and be cleaved to his wife, not to his other man, not to his other men and women, but one man, one wife. If peace, joy, and happiness are in your interest, you've got to buy this idea that sexual intimacy was for a married man and his wife, period. The leading cause of stress in the world today is relationships and number two, finances. Anything outside those boundaries, you live a stressed life. Be wary with who visits your home. Interrogate their values before admission. Many youths do profess that their first sexual encounter was with a close relative or their house help. And for those amongst us who have young kids below the age of 18, be very careful before you release them for the so-called sleepovers. Be absolutely convinced that where you are sending them to that other home, you share the same values. Therefore, I invite you today to join me in our moral struggle as a nation to stand for the truth, to be a man and a woman of significance. Refuse to take a passive role of wait and see. And let's, um, let's make a noble contribution in passing on the light of morality to the next generation. And you know, this generation is found on social media. If you've got to impact them, you've got to get in there. And I suggest that at this meeting, let's get in there. Let's tread this conversation. Let's light up the candles where they are found and hand over to the next generation what we receive from our parents, values that have been drained by the hour. Today, I want to share with you 10 aspects of this theme. It's going to be quite heavy for you, but I trust the Lord to give you quite some understanding as you walk with me. The first thing I'm going to share with you today is why women cheat. Number two, I'm going to discuss with you why men cheat. Number three, how to get into affairs. Number four, signs of an affair. Number five, post-affairs reactions. Number six, consequences of an affair. Number seven, surviving an affair. Number eight, how to affair-proof your marriage. Number nine, how to live after separation and divorce. Number ten and the last one, how to fight for your marriage. Stay with me. Number one, why women cheat. This is a message that every man should listen. And I have some bad news for the ladies. I have 10 good reasons why you cheat. Number one on the list, premarital affairs. If a woman was very close to a man, but they never got married for whatever reason, and she continues to fantasize about him, she's likely to be vulnerable to that man more so if her expectations in marriage were never met. Number two, husband absence. 
A lot of ladies who are led by their husbands in the name of work or further studies are left with a loophole I call emotional loophole that someone can exploit who is closer to her. Number three, revenge. A lot of ladies these days do claim that the reason they cheated on their husband is because he had an affair or because he is either verbally or physically abusive. While many of them may not say they're revenging, the real motive behind it is just vengeance. Number four, boredom. You get two lovebirds becoming two wheels of a cart known as a family. They get mechanical. They no longer have romance in their marriage, no bliss. It's routine and duties. The talk is mechanical in that house. And a cunning outsider full of life penetrates through the emotional back door. Number five, adultery is on the rise. Immorality is on the rise. We have Christian affairs as fun. We have normalized that which used to be detested in our traditions. So we have made affairs look normal. We've made them casual. Number six, last, there are some women, they just admire a certain celebrity and they just desire to sleep with a person they regard a high achiever or a star for the sake of it. Number seven, superiority complex. There are some women who want to sleep with a man because he's a very high studying man in the society. They don't like him at all. Could be a governor, could be a cabinet secretary, could be a CEO, but the real motive is to brag when they're talking to the girls that the governor is after them. The CEO is after them. That is their only motive. Number eight, free lunch. There are a lot of ladies who like stuff being done for them. So they like the car being opened for them, their bags being carried, they like being taken to the grocery, they like being taken to the mall, they like being driven around. That's what I'm calling free ranch. And as a result, they don't mind returning sexual favors. Number nine, attention. While every woman looks for attention, some take the game a little bit too far, especially in the workplace where you have an open office. And she wants when the boys are coming to the office, she's the first one to receive a whisper or some flatterly. She wants to show the other girls that men are charmed by her presence. Her desire for attention may make her go the extra mile and sleep with such a person so that that one is not denied. Number 10 and the last one, greed for power. There are some women who simply cannot take the staircase. They want to take the elevator to the top. So they don't mind sleeping with the boss for promotion, for a plump job, or a powerful position, because they don't want to grow slowly on their career progress. In the interest of my own safety, I want to stop there and go to number two. <laughs> so let me discuss why men cheat. Why men cheat? I suggest the antenna for every woman should be alert now. Be on the lookout for the six things I'm going to mention. Number one, sexual manipulation from the wife. There is no man who is going to beg for sex from his wife. If he advances towards her and she frustrates him for a couple of moments, the average man will go out simply to massage his ego. Number two, low self-esteem. Men derive their esteem from what they do, not who they love. If a man consistently fails in his business, or he's bypassed throughout promotions in his place of work, he's not making any progress, or he's consistently broke, he's likely to be injured in his ego. If there is a woman who knows how to handle such a person, she's able to step in validate him and make feel him feel good and more confident he becomes vulnerable to such a person number three 
adventure. There are men you can never satisfy them. If they have a tall wife, they will try a short one. If they have a plump one, they will try a petite one. If they have a light-colored woman, they will try a dark-skinned one. If they have a Kenyan, they will try a Ugandan. If they try a Ugandan, next time they will have a desire to attempt a Russian. There's nothing under God's seven you can do to satisfy them. We call it lust. And if that describes you, you are under bondage. Stay with me to the end of this presentation. You need deliverance. Number four. There are men who cheat because of what I call self-congratulatory or to self-gratify. In other words, when men achieve something phenomenal, they want to self-congratulate or self-gratify. They do different things. Some will toast the whiskey, others will go for spa, but others will go for a sex dose with a strange woman. Number five. There are some men who just notice full package in one individual and they are shocked how God has such fantastic ideas packaged in one person. Her physical, her beauty, her personality, her social status, her mannerism, the way she talks, and she wonders, God, how could you make one package like that? And they begin to strategize how to get the package. Number six, of course. There are sometimes men cheat just to show off. They want to tell the boys that they have been able to get a senior personality. They have been able to bring down a renowned person. They have the skills to do it. And this takes me to the third part of our discussion today, which is actually the theme that I posted in our flyers. I call it how to get into affairs. The third item of our discussion, how to get into affairs. I'm going to approach this particular section paradoxically, implying these are the loopholes you should watch out for. If you do not want to work out on your marriage and you want to get into affairs, I've got some seven tips for you. Tip number one, break down your communication with your spouse. If you break down your com the communication between you and your spouse, you will have irreconcilable differences. You will do things that are not palatable to your family values, and you'll expose both parties to affairs. Number two, if you don't want to work on your marriage, try this. Let pride rule over you. Never say sorry. Be irritated by minor things, and look for solace elsewhere. Number three, refuse to adjust to seasons and changes in your house. For example, you have a newborn baby in your house and you begin to complain you're being neglected. Another example, you have some job loss or some financial loss and you refuse to work them together as a couple and you come up with a parallel financial structure for that family. The false sure way of getting into affairs. Number four, Flatter with an opposite sex. Keep sending each other address texts. Share explicit pictures. Look at my eyes if you can. I know you're writing. Before long, your eyes will wink with telling narrations. Your handshake will linger with some unusual warmth. The touches and brushes will ignite unquenchable fire. And the rest, as they say, is absolutely history. Tip number five. Have several innocent dates with an opposite sex. Just innocent coffee dates with the same person. And let's compare notes after a couple of weeks. Number six, associate with people who normalize affairs. They give you graphical stories and illustrate how they had affairs and engagement with someone else until that becomes your new normal. Your mind will degenerate to attempt it. Number seven and the last one, 
Keep reading provocative magazines. Keep watching explicit videos over and over again. This will help you to create an ideal lover in your head and you'll go out to look for him or to look for her. For the avoidance of any doubt, I have shared those seven tips idiomatically, implying those are the things you must avoid if you do not want to get into affairs. And this takes me to the fourth part of our discussion tonight. Have you been blessed by this video? Please like and share with family, friends, and colleagues. Great people are either sources of light or they are mirrors that reflect the light. Be a channel of blessings to others and hit the subscribe button to enjoy thousands of my videos free of charge.